Indigenous chef Zach Kishig is taking me from farm to forest and lake to source ingredients for a mind-bending nine-course meal. Started out so small, we drank and then we talked. She got to know me, I got to know her and suddenly... Very quickly, please subscribe to this channel, I'll tell you why. Our team is trying to change the world and you can help us. This isn't just a show about food. It's using food as education to learn about cultures and injustices across the world. Tyranny, oppression, and how the past has made things the way they are now. Learning about these things will inspire compassion and dispel negative stereotypes. When you subscribe, YouTube will push it. You'll be helping us spread awareness towards things that matter. Because if you don't care about what happens to your fellow human beings, then my God, what else do you care about? Hit the subscribe button below. Zach's meat's not coming out of plastic packets. He's meticulously sourcing his proteins. This is extraordinarily different than your industrial farm. Open fields, no artificial illumination or cages. Anita, along with her husband and daughter, run the farm. What's your favorite part of it? Oh, is that right? <laughs> and that's cool. yeah. kind of the cool thing about it is everything, every day is different, everything's different. So these are the Berkshire pigs. So yeah. they're a heritage breed and they yeah. do put on more fat because they're the genes are still from before the fat was, they were, weren't bred to be lean. <laughs> it makes the meat more juicy and flavorful. These brawny Berkshires are breeders. Their hulking frame could birth a small adult with ease. If I ran into these ladies in a dark alley, I'd give up the goods, no questions asked. But luckily for me, they look happier than pigs in, well, you get it. Nothing's wasted here. Bones are roasted and brought to make a jus. Fat is rendered down and used for cooking and baking. I get enough fat off of a pig to do about 20 pies. Yeah, and then just a couple weeks ago, I got a couple back legs from Anita that we're curing, that we're gonna smoke, and then we're gonna hang as well. Okay. So then now we have sort of a, uh, a basement of food going on that'll, that'll help us through the winter time as well, right? Using sort of these traditional methods, like indigenous methods, yeah. and now we've taken it to a modern sense where we don't have to focus on just one thing where I have a relationship with Anita now, where we can get different products and do the same thing. I thought you were gonna help her hurt the pig. Hurting pigs ain't easy. My skinny ass is way too passive. Please go. Yeah, a moment of freedom. Is <laughs> we're gonna use these to make um, uh, a duck egg ice cream. So we use the yolks and we make sort of a classic creme anglaise. But what we're gonna do to add sort of the Aboriginal theme to it is we've went out and we forged chaga from birch trees and that's some sort of a medicinal growth. So we're gonna powder that and then make an ice cream with, uh, with, with the duck egg yolks. So we have like a uh, medicinal chaga mushroom ice cream that has uh, medicinal purposes. And then we're gonna turn that into a popsicle and serve that to you guys as well. Remove people from their land and disrupt their diet. Like the Chippewas of Nawash unseated First Nations community. Unseated why? The British Crown forced them to surrender their lands in 1836. Over time, their knowledge of food systems vanished, which makes what Zach Kishik is doing extraordinary. As part of the Chippewa community, he's rediscovering pre-colonial foods and transforming them using Anishinaabe and classical techniques. The Chippewas are one of many culturally related but distinct groups of Anishinaabe peoples, a First Nations group whose geography spans the Great Lakes area of Canada and the United States. When you eat fish fresh from the lake, there's no comparison, my friend because before buying your grocery store fishy, it made more stops than an Uber pool driver. And those delicate flesh fibers break down and putrefy by the second, releasing noxious odors. Zach's underwater delicacies are sourced from Robichaux fishing, a Chippewa-owned business, catching and selling fish straight off the dock. And if you're lucky to get some before it's sold out, it tastes that good. Their quota lies within Lake Huron and Georgian Bay. It doesn't hurt when you have family in the biz. Zach's cousin Jordan and her husband Alan run this fishing operation. So he's getting it straight from the plug. And they're super cool. They're about to dock for the day, but seeing mine and Zach's faces, making that one more time please face, they valiantly took us out for a spin on the Benjamin Charles. This is where we're gonna get a fish for, for Saturday now too. Okay. I'm gonna come out here a lot more. If we're going to the middle, man, now I can come out here. Large-sized rollers haul in mostly pickerel and whitefish, 
which are then gutted and sometimes filleted on the boat. The water's so clear. Yeah, it's, it's real, so clean. Real clean. We live on Lake Ontario, it's the opposite of this. <laughs> yeah. There's something so cathartic about being on the water. Food is a reflection of self. So to really understand why Zach puts what he does on a plate, I need to better understand his worldview. We're at the Mawikwadong Indigenous Friendship Center, meeting with Elder Paul. Elders are revered for their understanding of history, teaching, languages, ceremonies, and healing practices. Oh yeah, and he beats a mean drum. sound penetrates, mimicking the rhythm of a heartbeat. Paul's voice tapped into a collective pain deep within. At the same time, it was joyous and laced with hope. And these two contrasting feelings were healing. The sound somehow opening a window to the mystery of something greater than us, something sacred. And a juridical personality uh, and a person and a citizen are all artificial by definition legally and we become subservient to the crown and to other authorities where within the intent of uh, the full extent of right claims, interests, and freedoms of, of a human being in its fullest definition, there is nobody who governs anyone. We are all self-governing. What is your opinion right now of things like the Indian Act? Do you want it dismantled? We have to understand the legality of the Indian Act before we can detach. The legal system that governs the Indian Act, it is built on the juridical personality. I'm a status Indian, you're a status Indian. If I pull my status card out, it'll show you how I'm registered, okay? So I can only be governed by a colonial legal system. The Indian Act holds something over us because it brings us down to the corporate definition, which is, what the Indian Act is itself. If we're gonna set aside our citizenship, what are we going to adopt and have put in place so that it fulfills you know, the mandate of the human being, of the Anishinaabe, of, of others? So once we figure out how and when we can do that, we can then look at a total dismantling of the Indian Act. Understanding the philosophy better, I'm ready to see some pre-colonial ingredients. Adrian is a program coordinator consulting on home gardening, small-scale farming, hunting, fishing, foraging. Her mission, to counteract diseases like diabetes, which is rampant within her community, and bring back diets of pre-colonial times when indigenous peoples died of old age, not diet-related disease. This is one of the ones that uh, I harvested with Paul that you guys were talking to earlier. It's called the uh, wike, that's the indigenous word for it, or rat root or sweet plague. And it's a really, um, it's a really good medicine for anxiety. This one's tamarack. So this is bark that's been scraped off the, the tree branches. So tamarack, it grows in wetlands, it grows directly in water. It's the only uh, deciduous conifer that we have around here. This is one that's really common across Northern Ontario. It's called Labrador tea or Meshkigabug. It's in the rhododendron family. So this one's actually a really great one for diabetes because this really? is one that it, okay. it like directly lowers your blood sugar. Join us next time for the conclusion of this adventure with Chef Zach Keeshan, who's planning to cook a mind-bending nine-course meal. He's putting things you've never seen before on a plate. Quickly, we terribly hope you enjoyed this episode and got value from it. Check out past episodes where we get deep into other cultures. For the future, we're working on a ton of exciting projects. Subscribe to get notifications on when new episodes drop. Also, if you're in the food or travel industry and want your culture featured, reach out through email and social media. Links in description. Until then, book fast food.